G'day. G'day. Thanks for stopping by. Well, in this video, we wanted to share with you an unexpected stopover we had at the Living Desert. While we were staying at the Broken Hill Caravan Park, someone there told us about the Living Desert. They really, really highly recommended a stay there. So we thought, why not? Let's check go it out. And check it out. Yep. Let's do it. So we booked online for a one night stay at the Starview Primitive Campground. So this campground has 15 unpowered sites and a separate area for tents. It's got a shelter with free barbecues, yep. picnic tables, uh, there's toilets, showers, um, drinking water available, uh, it's just tank water. So for us, we, we actually filled up one of our tanks and took water in with us um, for use there. And um, so there's no water hookup. Was no it? water book up. Nope. Yeah. Nope. So access to the campground is via a PIN code. So this PIN code is sent to you after you book via an email, a reply email. Yep. And there's a maximum of five nights stay. Yep. And there's no pets or fires allowed. No. So there's a couple of restrictions, but I tell you, it was still worth it. It was worth the visit, wasn't it? Most definitely. Mm. Come and join us and we'll check out the Starview Primitive Campground and the living desert. Yay! <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> to get to the living desert, you travel out of Broken Hill along Nine Mile Road to the turnoff. It's well signposted, so you shouldn't miss it. Oh, and there's a park entry fee in addition to the camp fees. So the entry fees to the park are quite um, quite fine really, it's quite good value. So it's $6 per person um, for the day or a family of two adults and children is $22. The only way that you can actually pay now is by doing uh, a pay pass. So you'll need a card um, to pay whatever fee it is that you need. But you can also pick up some brochures here and I might pick up one because apparently I heard there's some really amazing walks around here. So I've come to a T intersection. We're heading towards the Starview Tribute Campsite where Paul and I will be staying for the night. Yay! There's a gate to the campground that requires the pin code you get when booking. We arrived quite early at the campground, so weren't sure if the code was time sensitive or not, but all good. Time to check out my backing skins. That'll do it. Good parking, Max. It's that first time. I know. I surprised myself. <laughs> <laughs> so we're only here for one night. So if we're only here for one night, we just give, we just put the muck mat out um, so that we don't walk everything into the van, and that'll do. And depending on the weather, we might put the awning out and the chairs out. It just depends. We'll keep it as simple as possible for one night, so um, not too much work at all. I asked the ranger about our sullage, and he said it was fine to drop our grey water on the plants behind the van. Twelve kilometres out of Broken Hill is the Living Desert State Park. Now it's got uh, quite a few walks here. There's a cultural walk, there's a flora and fauna walk, and there's a sculptor's walk. So we're going to spend our day, day travelling around here and just having a bit of a look and see these trails. Oh wow, look at this whole oh, beautiful flowers in a desert. I was speaking to the ranger this morning. And he said that this is the greenest he has ever seen this place. It hardly resembles a desert. A lot of, lot of been rain being through there, eh? Right, so the first part of the walk, this is what we encounter. The recent rains have washed away a bit of it by the looks of it. Some steps up through the tree. 
first part of the walk was all about the native flora. Trail was a mixture of surfaces, from gravel to pavers and everything in between. Places you get a bit of um, concrete and rock. All right, cultural walking trail, Arbitorium, we'll go on the cultural walking trail. So, up here. Where are we going? Cultural. It's been the shelter. We were warned that on really hot days this walk can be quite risky and while they try to provide shelter and other facilities around the park it is recommended not to attempt the walk after midday on hot days. Here we are on the cultural walk, heading up. So you don't see the car down there, just. But the walk's not too bad, it's all gravelled. At the moment it's even easier than the flora fauna walk, re walk really. Uh -huh. Amazing views from up here. A brick path. I don't know if it's any easier to climb though, is it? Probably easier than what's underneath, maybe. Oh, giving the car was a bit of a workout. <laughs> Again. <laughs> That's it. Look at these plants, beautiful, aren't they? Wow. Just approaching what they call the viewing hide, where if we sit there quietly, apparently we can see some birds come around without them even noticing us. Let's go check it out. Oh, these are replicas of shelters used by the uh, local indigenous people. Apparently oh, these are story poles. What can you tell me about them, Wayne? Anything? These story poles, illustrated project completed by the Aboriginal Arts and Cultural Practices Certificate 1 Class of 2004. Contemporary interpretation with the students have assessed what's linked to their own culture, heritage and to the living desert, which is this reinterpreted into the form of carved images. Onto the Red River Gum Poles. I don't think he wants to let us pass. Next, we've got the scenic lookout. And it's all the way up there. There. All right, let's go. How cool is this? They even have drinking water with cups here. What a wonderful idea. I'm so, so impressed. How impressive. I am impressed with this National State Park actually. <laughs> oh, well, we might start that again. Oh, I'll, I'll put the video back on once when it gets correct together. I, do, I can't do it on my own. So we managed to work out the tap. <laughs> There's water. Not bad, actually. Very good. Alright, here we go. Ready for the climb. Come on. I can't imagine doing this in the heat of summer. There's a shelter down there, and over here, there's a car park. I don't know if you can see our car in the distance there. That's where we've walked. Mouth. <laughs> we swallowed about three. 
Oh, look at these. These are stirp peas. The desert flowers. Beautiful. You don't see this on too many bushwalks. They actually have a loo. Cool. This is all mine. It's full of water now. Oh, sure is. A couple of old prospectors sit up there. The Smoko. How nice is this? Yeah. Then you got this view. I know, and a seat. Mm, so good. So good. I'm so impressed with this place. Another one of the attractions here at the Living Desert are these Broken Hill sculptures. Okay. But look at this pop. The gate closes at 8 p.m. So it, apparently these sculptures are great during the day, but they are magnificent during sunset. So hopefully we can come back here at sunset yeah, and check them out. Yeah. Oh, well, let's go have a look at them. So at the Starview Primitive Campground, there's 15 sites around the place. This one, which we're in, number seven, is the biggest. It's actually on the corner, so it's really wide. Most of them are quite narrow. But this one, the back end, and there's nothing. So you just got pretty much a straight line. But the our one fans out an angle, so there's so much room here. It's huge. Oh, they've got a camp kitchen and amenities here. That's about it. And um, fresh drinking water available. Uh, the amenities, showers and toilets. Anyway, let's go have a look. So this is the camp kitchen. Your fresh water there. I think it's rain water. I don't know if it's treated or not. Um, a couple of tables, a couple of barbecues. The gas operator free. Uh, just press the button, get them running. We cooked our dinner on it before and it worked really well. The lights in here forget to be darker. A right. couple of light switches, so not bad. Then over here, okay, so here's the amenities. The toilet. Nah, just kidding. It's over here. Two toilets and showers. Maybe change and maybe change. So look. Yes, it's nice and clean. Toilet, shower, hot and cold. Anyway, so that's basically it for the campground. It's so peaceful here. It's a beautiful, great spot. There's also another area up on the hill up higher uh, where you can sit and watch the sunset. But we're going to go up to the, um, the the sculpture park again and watch the sunset there. It's supposed to be pretty good. It's a little bit cloudy, so I don't know how good it's going to turn out. Well, I'm going to check it out. It's commemorating the Broken Hill Sculpture Symposium that was opened in 1993 and a list of all the sculptors that took part in that. So here we are at the Sculpture Park at Sunset. We want to come and just check out what it looks like at this time of the day. Certainly the sculptures come alive with light and some of the features on the sculptures itself really become, become more distinctive at this time of the night. Altogether, there are 12 sculptures created by local and international artists. Each one has a story to tell. 
It was quite busy at the Sculpture Park, but the sunset was still spectacular and definitely worth a visit. Even the drive back was just breathtaking as the sun was setting. Well, that just about wraps up our time here at the Living Desert. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. We certainly enjoyed showing you around this area here and what an amazing place it was. Absolutely. I'm so, so glad that someone mentioned it to us and we snuck it in there before we headed back off. Definitely worth a visit. Mm, definitely. Yeah. All right, well, hopefully you can join us next time as we continue our travels north as we head towards Mullumbimby in Northern Rivers area of North and New South Wales. Well, that was a mouthful. It was. And we're going to do that that through <laughs> remote New South Wales. Yep, we'll just have to keep our eyes on the road closures. Yeah, thanks There's been to plenty the of those. Absolutely, absolutely. So join us next time. Yep, thanks for stopping by. Bye for now. Bye.